Fuzzy, what was um, what was Aaron's reaction when he got the news he's coming in the team? Uh, little, a little bit subdued in some ways from the external side, probably internally, um, you know, very proud, and um, and he's earned it. You know, he's been a. He's, he is a big part of our whole leadership group. He's a um, big contributor off. He's, he's grown to become an outstanding, you know, preparer for a test match. And um, so I think there's a little bit of a reward there, but it's also, you know, it's something that we're very confident. In. We've watched his, his leadership through the Highlanders and I thought he did a great job there as well. So it gives us a lot of confidence to give him that, to give him that title. Are you used to Aaron Smith talking a fair bit anyway? What's it going to be like as a skipper? Oh, I'm so happy for him. Uh, we're all excited for him. What a better place to do it. So um, I don't think he'll change too much. He'll focus on playing well for the team, as he has been doing, uh, especially this season. He's been exceptional. Uh, he's got some great leaders around him, and we'll be there supporting him. So it'll be a great occasion for Nuggy, and, uh, yeah, can't wait to see or play with him, actually. <laughs> He gets a legitimate chance to harass the refs, I guess, this week as well. Yeah, well, he's got the right to, I guess, talk to them this week. You've been around Aaron quite a lot for a long time. What do you think it is that keeps him going and getting better? He's always been very energetic, and um, that passion and desire has always been there. Um, Oh, gosh, he's got a lot of young guys that have always been pushing him. Um, but one thing that stands out is his internal drivers, whatever it is, that makes him tick. Uh, he's always the one out there doing the extras. Um, he's always trying to bring people with him. Um, he's always offering advice. He's always asking how we can get better. So having a guy like him on my team, I learn so much from, from that, um, not just the technical parts, um, you know, in terms of preparation, even being here for a number, we actually realise this is our 10th year and it's just flowing. So he's always trying to get better, which is inspiring. Big expectations on, on Brody and Bowden. Where do you think are both that and their returns from Japan? Yeah, I gave Brody a number out of 10, but I won't repeat to you. I'll probably, um, look, he's, Attitude-wise, they're both 10 out of 10. And, and I think um, physically, really excited about where they're at. You know, like I think um, Bodie's looking fast, he's looking, he's looking calm and excited. Uh, I think we saw that last week. I think Brody is, is exactly the same. He's, you know, he's um, prancing around and he's got a little bit of a bounce to his step. He's, you know, he's still got a little bit of conditioning to, to do. And... Uh, but it's more the the skill set stuff and the speed of the skill set stuff that he's probably just making little adjustments to. But um, he's getting there very very quickly. So, you know, sad days about us. A, a really good opportunity for us to see where he's at, and and you know we know he's going to be a hundred percent when it comes to the commitment side of the game. I imagine he'll empty his tank pretty quickly. And but really excited about where, getting his measurement on, on his skills under pressure in terms of his tackle and his, his catch pass stuff and um, and just put a, a bit of a marker on the space there. Do you think that the whole Barrett and Moonga situation has been overplayed a bit? Oh, potentially. Um, I don't read too much or listen to too much. Um, what I know is I've got a healthy competition here and uh, whoever's starting we always try and make each other better, prepare each other as best as they can for the weekend so that won't change in, in the weeks to come. Um, ultimately it's about being the best um, for the team and healthy competitions grow in this team. And just lastly, what did the break in Japan do for yourself? Um, look, it made me realise how good it is here in New Zealand, um, especially during this time of COVID. Um, you know, in normal times it would be a great experience up there but it was challenging. Um, I was surprised by the level of rugby. I think a lot of people write that off, especially when you get to the top probably six teams. It's, it's really good rugby. So um, probably the best thing about going up there was the amount of time I got to spend with my wife and, and my little daughter. So that was pretty special. Rosie, how does it feel to be, be back a couple of days out from making a return to the All Blacks? Yeah, I'm a... I'm a little bit nervous, to be fair. Um, it's been a wee while since the 2019 World Cup, 
But um, no, it's been good. Um, you know, we had the camp in Auckland, and then obviously being around the team last week, preparing for a test. So yeah, I'm a, I am a little bit nervous, but I'm also excited to get out there and um, get back in the test arena. That's for sure. Just how much did that change in preparations in terms of? coming in and quarantining, like what, what sort of challenges did that add for you to, to get to where you are now? Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't been too bad. We um, Probably the, the one that kind of thing to get around was we, last time I trained or played was the middle of May, so um, getting back used to the training load. Um, the first scrum session was a real wake-up call, obviously the fair bit of power with the big boys pushing and working away up front, but um, you know, I did a fair bit of work when I was at home in Hawke's Bay before we come together and then Having last week in the camp, um, just to get the conditioning right, yeah, in a pretty good spot. Ethan, just, just how much traffic do you think's getting ready to charge up the highway? <laughs> uh, yeah, there'll be a few people coming up, I'd say. Yeah, got a big. How does it feel for you um, to have it confirmed now you're going to make your All Blacks debut? Yeah, it's a dream come true. <laughs> I guess what 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 goes through your head, you know, when 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 you hear that news. Um, yeah, just proud. Um, yeah, just making my family proud, and yeah. What sort of advice do you give to guys that are, you know, going out there for the first time? Um, I think we always talk around just uh, nail your role, and everyone else will do their part to make your make your job easy um, by nailing theirs. And uh, it, yeah, there can be a lot of uh, emotion and and a lot of family that get in touch throughout the week, which sometimes feels like it's, it can be a burden, but it just shows how proud they are, and then you've got to sort of push that aside, come come tomorrow, and just start preparing for, for a normal game. At the end of the day, uh, everyone's in this team because they're good enough, and uh, he gets the opportunity to show that on Saturday. Is it something that is still sinking in, or have you had a, had a chance to, to talk to family? Uh, yeah, I found out on Tuesday, so I uh, rang my parents. And um, my old man's in Australia at the moment. He left a couple of days after the team got named. But, um, yeah, they're just we're super proud. And, yeah, there'll be mums coming up. So that'll be cool. Who do you think has been some of your biggest influences throughout your career so far? Um, guys, guys like Peter Scout, uh, my first team coach down in, in Southland. Uh, obviously my parents. Um... Aaron Smith with the Hollanders when when I got named he yeah sort of took me under his wing, and um sh sort of showed me the ropes just told me to be myself and grab the opportunities with two hands. What was it like even last Saturday sort of helping the guys train as they were getting ready to come onto the park and doing those sort of drills and that sort of thing? Yeah, it was it was cool just to get that um, weekend just to see how it all how it all runs sitting on the bench last week helping the boys warm up, just seeing yeah how the ship runs and. Just get me prepared for this weekend. Ian, um, injuries robbed you of a number of open side flankers and um, throwing um, Ethan Blackadder in there. What, what sort of gives you confidence that he's ready for that role in his second test? Yeah, well, we when we selected the squad, um, in our mind, he, he was always going to be a seven option for us. And... So I think regardless of Dalton's calf and, and Artie's knee, we're always going to look at an opportunity. So it's um, presented itself, made it quite an easy decision to make. And, you know, he's trained well. He's probably got a little bit more anxiety about preparing for seven than, than six, you know, because he's played a lot more at six. But he's this year he's already had a, a couple of games at seven. You know, we like him there. We, we think he's got a... Um, an attitude and, and a desire to just work and be around the ball and and he brings a, a physicalness to that contest. There's a, a, perhaps a little bit of fine tuning in some of that areas around the ball to work on but um, oh, he, he's, he's thriving at the moment and, and looking forward to seeing how he goes. Good motivation or warning for Fiji that he's ready to take on that open side role then for Yeah look he's, uh, I've been very impressed with him uh, since he's been in here um, for a young guy He's on top of his game when it comes to preparation and he asks the right questions and um, like I said, he, he's into everything on the, on the park, so uh, it's great to see.